Hey everyone, this is Robert Kranievich from Hortonworks. Today I will cover a IoT trucking demo running uh, on the IBM's data science experience, local mode, meaning it's running on top of Hortonworks data platform. So let me go into my projects folder and I'm going to go to public demo. So now we're launching a Jupyter notebook. All right. So this demo will cover several pieces. Uh, we'll uh, fetch the data from HDFS, perform feature engineering, data visualizations, um, binary classifier with the Spark um, ML uh, API. We'll save the model in the machine learning repository. We'll deploy the model via UI and then test the model via, via the UI and uh, a RESTful API as well. So the use case that we'll cover is, um, is imagine a, a trucking company um, that has a variety of sensors. Uh, you know, it can detect the, the speed of the truck, whether the truck is uh, weaving out of its lane, following too closely, and of course we also have the weather data. And what we want to do is want to predict how likely the driver is um, to commit a violation, basically, if, uh, if the driver has become too tired or he's, he's behaving normally, and um, whether we want to identify or, or um, we want to uh, communicate that, uh, that back to the management uh, via a dashboard or perhaps you want to communicate with the driver himself. So let's get started. Let me import uh, all the crucial libraries, NumPy, Pandas, and of course initialize the Spark context. Uh, let's import the data. Let's preview data set. Okay. Now let's load the data into a data frame and make some basic calculations. All right, so what we see is um, a table with, um, with headers that at this point still, um, we don't know what they are because probably the CSV file that we've imported from doesn't have the header information. And, um, and we, uh, we can see how many violations versus no violations we have over here. So, with a total of 1,359 um, data points, we have uh, 174 of them that have violations and the rest of them uh, have no violations. So keep in mind, uh, this will be uh, relevant later where we have a uh, skewed data set where we have few um, examples of violations versus no violations. So now let's perform some uh, basic data wrangling. So what we wanna do is we wanna add the headers to uh, the data set over here. So we actually know what we're looking at. And so let's run this. All right, so now we have headers attached to our data. Um, the only part is missing is that all of this is um, string data right now. So uh, the next step we want to do is we want to actually uh, add some data types. So now we have a schema with both string, integers, and floats, depending on what the data type is. The next step is to perform feature engineering. So basically what we want to do is want to have just two classes. One is um, the driver is, uh, is, is, you know, it's, it's just normal driver behavior, so there's no violations. And then the other one is where the violations actually occur. So where the violations occur, again, for example, lane departure, over speeding, unsafe following distance, uh, and so forth, we want to mark that as a violation. So let's go on, uh, create a pandas data frame. Now we can see all the unique violation types that we have in our data set. And uh, once we perform a transformation, you'll see that now only the event types are classified as no uh, for no violation um, and uh, or no for normal driving behavior and yes for a violation um, has occurred, as you can see over here. And then we have, of course, all the other headers and then all the data um, with the proper data types. Let's make sure we use that new data transformation in our pandas that will be used for uh, visualizations. And of course, let's register our temper table in case we want to do some um, use Spark SQL to explore this data using uh, SQL syntax. Uh, now let's do some data ex um, analysis, um, export analysis. We're going to import some additional libraries, for example, Seaborn and Matplotlib. And uh, one more thing we have to do is we want to transform uh, the event, uh, event types to ones and zeros. 
certified to ones and zeros and the payment scheme to ones and zeros um, representing these different groups just because we need numbers and not actual name categories. So now as you can see these are the event types. After the transformation uh, we have this kind of uh, scheme and table. So now with this table we can go and easily uh, look and explore this data in um, using uh, all kinds of visualizations. So first let's do a correlation matrix of feature. And this is quite interesting. We can look at two things. One is uh, we, um, we can look at between the event types, um, for example this column or this row, that represents the, the uh, ultimate outcome and the label that we'll be using for our model training, and um, the rest of them are all the features. So what's interesting here is, of course, um, each, uh, each, 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 each feature should um, strongly correlate positively to each other. So this is the uh, downward diagonal over here. But what else, we, uh, another thing we can take a look at is, you know, are the features correlated positively uh, or negatively um, to each other, whether strongly or weakly? So for example, we can see that um, if the, um, the event type and certification, they're uh, negatively uh, strongly correlated, meaning that uh, a, a um, driver that is certified um, would be less likely to have a violation. Um, and we're just looking at the data set. This is not even model trained, not, nothing like that. It's just we're looking for correlation between the features um, and the data set that we have. Um, what else we can see is that, for example, um, you know, hours driven and, um, and, uh, and, and miles driven are strongly correlated. Um, and that, that makes sense because the more hours you drive, generally the more miles you will make. So one of these four features could be, for example, excluded um, from, from, from our model training if we wanted to iterate farther uh, later on. Um, and, uh, and other things to look at, and this will be important when we look at the models later on and the model training and the results is, for example, how are the event types correlated to other conditions? And as you can see, the foggy and rainy um, strongly influence the outcome of a detecting or predicting violation, and windy has um, slight uh, positive correlation. So this is one way of, of looking at it, um, at your data set as in, what features are highly correlated positively or negatively, inversely correlated to each other, um, and potentially which features um, would have a significant um, uh, positive or negative impact on the label. So that should give us an intuitive feel as far as to what will be going on. So now let's move on farther. Let's look at a pair plot. And as you can see, um, this isn't that useful, and it's mostly because um, the features that we have, a majority of them are categorical features, so basically zeros and ones, so it doesn't provide us with too much of useful information. Here uh, you can see these are quite interesting plots. Um, these are essentially uh, the longitude versus latitude, or trying to convey some of the information, or encapsulate some of the information of where the actual um, truckers have, have driven around the uh, around the country. So let's move on to histograms. That should provide simply slightly more useful information. All right, so now we have um, a, a quick overview of uh, the input and the output um, uh, data that will be used for model training. So we can, again, as I mentioned previously, for the uh, event types, you can see that the data set is quite imbalanced. We have mostly uh, no violations and uh, just a few violations. And the hours driven and miles driven correspond uh, closely to each other. Um, and you can see this distribution over here. And then of course, you can take a, take a quick look at the distribution of other input features that will be used in our model training. So we can answer some questions uh, before we actually even train data. Again, this, is, uh, this becomes useful, for example, as you recall, um, event types and uh, being certified are negatively correlated um, and, uh, and the slope of this line indicates this behavior. So again, um, if you're certified, um, generally uh, you should be less likely to, to commit a violation. And similarly, you can see the distribution over here uh, in this bar plot. So you can answer some more questions. For example, 
Um, do the hours driven correspond to committing violations? Um, and this is slightly counterintuitive because it seems that more hours driven um, correspond to, to, to fewer violations. Perhaps this is because, you know, on these longer trips, they're mostly highway miles. Um, so it's far less difficult um, to, to actually commit a violation, for example, you know, being too close or, or, or do some kind of speeding or being involved in uh, more of an urban type of setting uh, driving. Uh, again, this is looking in more detail, this is slightly more detailed histograms over here or distribution plots uh, of, you know, that this is the, the majority band between you know, 40 some to 60 hours um, on, on, uh, on, on average is the majority of, of the time spent by driving and as you can see this closely corresponds to, to the miles driven. So in this case again these two features and uh, the hours driven and the miles driven are highly closely correlated to each other.